Hello everyone, this is Aaron from Let's Code Python and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Python requests library to send some HTTP requests to a couple of different APIs. So if you've never used it before, the Python requests library is, it well, it's awesome. Um, it's built on top of URLib3, which is already a very popular and powerful uh, Python package library used for sending HTTP requests. But the request library just goes that little bit further and makes it much simpler and easy to send human readable HTTP requests. So let's jump right into using it. So if we fire up our terminal, let's clear that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is install the request library using pip. Uh, if you've already got it installed, you can skip this step. So I'm going to do pip install requests. I've already got it installed, so this won't do anything for me. And then once you've done that, you can you need to jump into the Python shell. So jump in with Python, and then the first thing you're going to want to do is import your requests library. So you do import requests. And there you go, we've imported requests. So now we can send some requests. So the first thing I'm going to do, just to show you kind of how easy it is to send them and give you a little kind of uh, taster of what it contains, let's send a get request to get us back a uh, page from GitHub. So let's send requests dot get. So we're going to use the get method to send request to https github.com. And we send that. And we've got back a status response of 200. So 200 means that our request has been received successfully and that there weren't any errors. Uh, if you ever get a request back, a response back that doesn't have a status code of 200, it might not be an issue. Um, there are other successful codes like 201, but sometimes if you get you know, the dreaded 404 error or something like that, it might mean there's something wrong with your request, like uh, you, sp you spelt something wrong in the URL, or there's something wrong with the data you tried to send, possibly in a post request. So yeah, it's worth checking your error code and you know, if there's anything wrong with it, then looking up what you need to do to fix it. Uh, while we're on the subject of uh, kind of error codes and sending different uh, requests, uh, there are four common types of request method that you're most likely to find yourself using. And those are get, which is the one we just use now to send a uh, get request to GitHub. There's post requests, which you use to send information to a chosen URL. Uh, there are put requests, which you use to update, sorry, update data at your chosen source and delete, which, well, it, it deletes things from your chosen source. So we've sent our get request to GitHub and we got back a status code of 200. Um, but let's let's try something with a bit more substance so you can really kind of get to grips with the request library and how powerful it is and kind of what's, what's there for you. So we're going to use the um, Swappy API. So, which is this one, sorry. Uh, so the Swappy API is a Star Wars API. It's a database containing pretty much all the information you can think of from the Star Wars universe. And you can send it uh, API requests using the requests library to get back any information you want from that database. So they have an example on the, um, the homepage. So they've got an example here of what you need, the URL you need to send your request to. So let's try it ourselves. So if we go back to our shell, and we type, uh, this time let's store it in a variable called r. So we're going to send another get request. We're going to do request.get uh, http swappy co. Let's move this so I can actually see what I need to type. Uh, slash api slash people slash one. There you go. If we send that, right, so that's sent. So the first thing you want to do, just like before, is to check your status code. And that'll tell you whether you're request was sent successfully and received successfully. So we got back a response of 200. So that's good. So it's a good start. So the next thing you're probably going to want to do is look at the content of what you were sent back from the API. So for our example, people slash one, we should have got back a response that contains the information for Luke Skywalker. Let's check that that's the case. So there's two ways you can um, look at or examine the content from your response that you got back. So you can do r.text and that gives you this. Uh, or you can do the uh, the request library has a built-in JSON 
method for use on your response, uh, which you can use as well. And that will give you this. So they look probably very similar, but there is a key difference between them. So the first one, r.text, will give you back a Unicode string, whereas the r.json method will give you back a JSON object. And that's key because you can use the JSON object to access information inside your response uh, really easily, just using ordinary Python dictionary notation. So if you look here, we've got Luke Skywalker under the key of name. So if we were to do uh, r.json name, that should give us back Luke Skywalker, which it does. Whereas if you want to do that with r.text, you'd have to kind of pass the string and maybe um, use some sort of indexing or something to pull it out of a list. It would be a bit more awkward trying to do it with r.text. So if the uh, API supports JSON, it's usually a better way to go. And a way you can check that is you can do you can check the headers. So if you do r.headers, that gives you back some information regarding your uh, request and response. Uh, so it gives you things like ex uh, methods that the API accepts. So you've got here allow, so you can get, and then a couple of other methods called head and options, uh, the date, and then down here you've got content type. So that's, this is content type here, and as you can see, it supports JSON. I think everything sent back by the Swappy API uh, is in JSON format. So we can use JSON quite easily here. So the next thing we can do is look at I don't think there's anything for this, but another thing you can look at is encoding. I think, yeah, I think for the Swappy API, um, there is no encoding, but sometimes you might need to check the encoding if it's not sending back something you expect. So UTF-8 is the general encoding that most APIs will send you back the response in. But if you need to uh, have a different encoding, then it's worth checking that. Um, so that's get requests. So the next thing I want to show you is uh, how to use the request library to send a post request. But to do that, we uh, we can't actually use the Swappy API. Uh, as you may have noticed in the allowed options, uh, it only supports get. Uh, and if you check the documentation for the Swappy API, you can even see that that's mentioned in the documentation. So I'll quickly show you. So we scroll down here under authentication. Uh, the Swappy API is completely open API. There's no authentication is required to query and get the data. Uh, this also means we've limited what you can do to just getting. So, yeah, as I just explained, we can't use the Swappy API to send post requests, but that's okay. We can use something else. Um, and something I like to use is request bin. So re request bin is, uh, it's really good. It's a, it's a nice way of easily inspecting the data you've sent in a post request uh, is being received as you expect it to be in a more uh, friendly and visual way. So first thing you want to do is go to HTTPS request, dot, uh, request B dot IN, and then it should bring you to this page. And then you just want to hit this big green button that says create a request bin. And that should bring up a page that looks like this. And on that page, you'll get a bin URL. So you want to copy that bin URL like so. And then we're going to use it in our terminal. So we're going to do, we're going to clear this. So it's easier to follow. Oh, of course, can't clear in the Python shell. Uh, so anyway, let's carry on. So let's set up a new one. Uh, let's send a new request. This time it's going to be a post request. So request dot post. Uh, and same as before. The first thing we give it is the URL. So I should have copied that into my clipboard, which I did. Okay, perfect. And then the next thing we want to send is uh, data. So we want to put some data in the body. So Request bin recommends you, ten, you send a, a timestamp as your data, which you can do if you like, um, but I'm going to put something different in there just so you can see for sure that I am actually, or that the request bin receives exactly what I sent it, because it's difficult to tell sometimes with a timestamp, uh, you know, with time zones and stuff, that it definitely is right. So something like this, name Nemo, is a bit easier to confirm. So if we send that, so the same as with the get request, you can check the status code to make sure everything worked as you expect. And then we do r.text and we get back. Okay, right. So how do you check that the post request uh, was, just, was sent as you expect it? How do we know that the post request was sent with the data we gave it? So if you refresh the page here, 
you should now get a page that looks like this. And this is all the information that the API request being received from your request. Um, and you should be able to see, oh yeah, over here. So under form post parameters, you can see that we gave it uh, in the data attribute name, uh, Nemo. So it's got key of name and a value of Nemo. So if I'm honest, that's pretty much all there, there is to using the Python request library. Uh, it's that easy, sending get requests and post requests. Um, it's important to remember that if you need to, if you need information on what the API that you're trying to use requires in the uh, request that you're trying to send, then the best place to check is the documentation for that API. Um, quite often the well, pretty much all our APIs nowadays will have good documentation on what to send. Uh, it does vary and obviously it's different for every API. So it, it is worth checking. Things don't always work as you expect and some sometimes they need uh, lots of different uh, keys and values in the data just to send some quite simple stuff. Sometimes it depends on the API, but generally it's quite straightforward and the request library takes all of the, the awkwardness out of it and makes it really, really simple. Uh, and in fact, I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, kind of a real life example of how you could use the request library to send an actual HTTP response to an API and get back something useful. So let's send, uh, let's close all of this for now. So let's close this one. Let's close the swappy API. And this was the home page for requests. So let's close that as well. So yeah, I can leave that open. So what I've done is I've set up a kind of a test user account on GitHub. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the request library to set up a new brand new repo on this account. So I've got an account called Nemo test account 2017. It's empty. It's brand new. It doesn't have any repositories. And we're going to send a request using the request library and set up a brand new repository. So let's set up a new uh, first thing we need to do is we're going to import JSON. And that's different from the JSON method that's built into the requests library. This is the actual JSON module itself uh, for Python. So we're going to do that and we're going to create some data. So we're going to do uh, data equals json.dumps and we are going to give it a uh, name. So we're going to call it uh, new repo. That's right. And let's give it a description as well. So description, uh, let's just say a test repo. Okay. We'll store that in data. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to send a request to GitHub. So we're going to do request dot. We need to do a post again because we're sending data. So uh, we need to do a post request and we're going to send it to HTTP API dot GitHub dot com slash user slash repos. And that's it. That's the URL that we need to send it to. We're going to send our data that we stored in the data variable. And then we also need our authentication details. So with requests, uh, again, that's really easy. What you need to do is to the uh, auth argument, give it a tuple containing your username, which I'm going to copy here. and the password for that account, which in this case is just path password 2017. And that's it. So we're gonna send that. Uh, and same as before, we're gonna check the status code. Go back 200, brilliant, it's a good sign. Um, and let's have a look at the response that was sent back. So we'll do R dot, I think it comes back in JSON actually. So let's, let's use the JSON method. Oh, Ooh, we didn't get anything back. That's not a good start. Hmm, there's be something wrong with the request I sent. We'll just check the, I reckon it's HTTP, yeah, it's HTTPS. Let's make a mistake, that should work. Yeah, that looks right. Let's send that. Let's try again. Okay, so check the status code again. Okay, 201. Okay, yep, I think that's possibly a redirect. Again, um, check that. No, redirect's 301. Uh, I should probably check what 201 is. I think that's, it is a success method. I just can't remember which one. Uh, and then g dot, 
again, I think this comes back in JSON format, so we can use that. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So it's quite a lot of information here. Uh, yeah, and as you can see, it's quite hard to actually uh, make out anything from this. So this is why using the JSON method is quite useful because you can pick out bits of information. So we sent it uh, the name that we wanted to give our repo. So let's check that the name that we get back is the one we expect. So if we do this, we should get back new repo. Perfect. Excellent. So it looks like we've set up the repo correctly, but we can now check that by going to the actual GitHub page itself. If we refresh this, we should now have a repo called new repo. And we do. There we go. So we've used the requests library to send uh, an actual live useful request to set up a repo. And it was that, that straightforward. That was all we needed to set it up. Just this kind of one line of Python code up here. I mean, you could have even this data, you could even put that directly in that and just made it all just one line of one line of code. So there you have it. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Uh, and if you have any suggestions on uh, other Python packages you'd like me to do a quick tutorial on or some concepts that you'd like me to explain, then please feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.